Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to create a lab using GNS3 and how to start GNS3 and the fastest, easiest way to get started with GNS3. So, first of all, you're going to want to install GNS3 and you go to their website and download it. And then you need to make sure when you're installing it that you um, install the Win PC cap. Um, that option will come up while installing it. Uh, it's an important feature for GNS3 to work. And then Dynamips will install as well. And then once you get done with all that, you can go ahead and set your hypervisory directors or whatnot. Or you can just skip all these options and get straight to the new project screen like I'm at here. And then I'll show you where to go from there. So you're going to want to create a project. And for every project you create, you want to save NVRAMs and crypto keys. And what that's going to do is it's automatically going to save your um, virtual RAMs that you're creating here. So you click that option, make a name for it. In this case, I'm doing an HSRP lab, but I already have one. So I'm just going to simply cancel in this case, but in your case, you could create one. And then go to recent files. And here's my topology that I've already created. see that my final topology looks like this. Now it's actually really easy to do. Um, there's a little bit of intricacy involved in it, but uh, basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go and download a um, iOS uh, for a specific device, and I recommend using a 7200 uh, platform. Uh, we can see this right here. Those and all this stuff. Okay. Um, you can see my ILS file. I saved it to the desktop. It's the C7200. You can use any one you want, but you can download them online for free. Just type um, Cisco ILS downloads and you'll get hits on that. Um, and then after this, you're going to want to go in and create devices. In this case, I have the C7200 already created, and what I did was I simply took the file, and I put it in a spot where I would, where I would keep it near the rest of my um, files with GNS3. So, that's the wrong GNS3. Um, let's see where I got it here. Okay, program files. Program files, DNS3, where you install it at. And then you want to create a folder called images. You can keep all your images there. In this case, we're only using one. It's just um, easier to access it when you have it in a desired location. So here's my image file for my C7200. And I save it there. Now, when I get into here, in order to activate that, you're going to want to go to Edit iOS Images and Hypervisors. And then you're going to want to search the image file. And we already have it loaded here, but just for the sake of showing you how to do it, um, then you're going to come to a location where you have it saved, as I just showed you. And plug in your GNS3 images. And there you go, bam, you're going to select that open. After you open it, you're going to click save, and then this file is going to pop up up here showing your image that you have. Personally, I'll just use the 7200 and just change the um, change the icons for these. After you create one, show you an example, you click on it, your 7200 shows up because you now have an image saved under your hyper or under your iOS images. That would be creating a new device, and that's how I create all these. But we don't need that one right now. So, for your computers, the next thing you want to do is change the symbols for what the devices are, and you want to configure it. So you're going to come in here to your node configurations, your slots, and you're going to use a retrospective um, mod modulator for that slot. In this case, we're using the IOFB. This has one fast ethernet, plenty for any host. So we got the one fast ethernet on here. <coughs> and then for these switches, these are all actually multi-layer 7200. 
um, routers, but they work as switches as well, so that's why I use that um, iOS because it has multiple options for it. For the switches, I'm going to use the 2FE TX and the 2FE as well because they have three connections on them, and we need that for total, so that'll be enough um, for this scenario. And then if you're using anything, um, doing routing, you need um, serial connections, you're going to need to add a um, slot with a 4T plus or whatever any of these other items might be. You can look them up or just simply install. You can simply activate them on different devices and then you'll see all of them come up um, whenever you go to attach interfaces uh, with the cable. So here's your example of that. You just click on the interface with the cable and bam. You see all the interfaces that are able, that are capable of installing a cable. The red ones have not been used yet. These are serial interfaces. So when you click on this one, you're automatically installing a serial cable. So that's how I put all these cable lines in here. And then once you're finished designing your topology and setting up the nodes, you can go back and you can start up your devices. You can either do them individually or you can do them all at the same time. Um, you want to have a little bit of processing power. I always use at least a quad core. And this computer I'm using has a solid state drive, so it's got plenty of RAM and virtual memory for these types of operations. You want to be using something at least dual core or better and have a little RAM, or you're going to be lagging really bad. I'd recommend something that's a quad core, but it's personal preference anyway. Um, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much covers everything as far as getting set up. And then from there, you just console in with Buddy, Super Buddy, and you can load your configurations. And that's pretty much, that's the, that's the biggest pump as far as getting started. If you're wanting to um, get into more technical issues, feel free to contact me or just simply search the forums. That's how I learned all this and you're good to go.